Hi, I'm Dr. Mark. And what I'm going to do for you today is inform you on how to choose a surgeon to have them perform surgery on you. What is the best way and what are the criteria that you should be thinking about when you go through a surgery? Well, you have to ask yourself, first of all, most importantly, what is going to be the result? And what are you going to be put through prior to getting to that end stage result? And the best way you can do this is talk to several patients that have already been to that surgery. They will tell you what they went through, how much pain they had, what they could do, what they couldn't do, how long they were off their feet, could they drive, could they carry things with their hands, or did they need crutches and they couldn't do anything, or did they need help with family members escorting them to the bathroom, where they need to be carried to the bathroom, do they have to crawl to the bathroom, or could they simply just walk there with no pain. So you're going to find a lot of variations from patient to patient to patient from different doctors, but what you will find is that each patient from the same doctor should have a very similar story. Why? Because doctors are consistent in the way they perform surgeries, just like an avid golfer. Avid golfers typically shoot around the same score. Surgeons, when they perform surgery, typically have same or similar outcomes. So that is the best way you can truly navigate through your decision-making process, whatever you do. Do not choose a surgeon based off of what college or medical school they went to, what medical group they practiced with, what famous person they may have performed surgery on. You need to focus on the results. So when it comes to choosing a surgeon, yes, the results are important, and so are the number of cases that doctor has performed, and you should find out how many procedures he's actually performed. It's probably difficult to do that accurately, but we do post all of our before and after pictures here on my website, so you can actually count the number that I've done even within the last decade, which is probably by far more than any other surgeon's gonna be doing in his entire career. Matter of fact, I did 535 bunion operations in one year, which is more than most doctors will do in their entire lifetime. So volume is important. The outcomes are even more important. The ability of that patient to get up, be ambulatory without pain, and be able to start running fairly quickly, let's say within six to eight weeks, is important as well. I want to talk to you about a new procedure that's recently kind of taken the nation by storm. That's called the lapoplasty. It's a spinoff of the lapidus procedure, which is a fusion of the mid-arch, namely the first metatarsal cuneiform joint fusion. Now this procedure, although it sounds very nice when they advertise it, actually creates a lot of disability. You're probably not going to be able to walk for three to six weeks on that foot. What you really should be doing is not listening really to the advertisements of this procedure, but you should be listening to the patients who have just had this procedure performed on them. You're going to see differences between one lapoplasty patient and another lapoplasty patient if they came from different doctors. So what you should be comparing is two or three or possibly four lapoplasty patients that have come from the same surgeon. That's what you should anticipate having surgery by the same surgeon they did. What you should be doing is find other patients or listen to patients that have had it done. If you're going to a doctor performing the lapoplasty, and that's what he suggests, ask him to talk to three patients. See what he has to say. Don't let him say that, oh well, due to the HIPAA regulations, we cannot allow you to do that. No, it's, they simply need to call the patient, ask their permission if they would speak to a prospective patient and allow you to speak with them. Matter of fact, better yet, what you should do is ask the doctor to schedule you an appointment at the same time that his post-surgical patient that he just performed the lapoplasty on is going to be in the office. That is the best thing you can do. Choosing a surgeon and trying to figure out what your recovery process will be like applies to all different types of surgeries, not just foot surgery. You can use the same technique or the same decision-making ideas to figure out what you're going to be going through. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions regarding the procedure that I perform and its outcomes or the lapoplasty procedure, I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. You can contact us through social media and email, all linked within the description below. Thank you for watching.